Welcome to another Sweet Tarts of Fighting Breakdown. James DeLacy here, and we're going to take you through Sugar Sean O'Malley's strength and conditioning. It looks like it's six weeks out. It's from his vlog for the upcoming UFC 299. So, again, nothing against fighters, coaches, anything like that. Just my personal opinions, preferences, trying to explain maybe why they're doing what. And maybe if it's good or bad, etc., in my opinion, obviously taking a lot of inferences in these because we don't know the full training schedule, what they've done beforehand, etc, etc. We're just getting a very little snapshot into the training. So uh, I have to sound off for this one because I think there's some music running in the background. So looks like we're starting with some resisted band sprint drills and then into some resisted accelerations. And what else we got within that? And I'll comment on it. Uh, and resisted lateral movement. I like that. So, and then backwards. That's a nice way to start a session too. So if if you are a fighter who is used to, let's, let's say used to running, running doesn't cause problems for you. Uh, maybe you, you uh, played a lot of team sports or were a track athlete in the past. Doing this kind of stuff can be great. Especially at the start, obviously you do your typical warm up, but... After the warm-up, this would be considered uh, more of your speed power work within that. And it's done horizontally, which is quite nice uh, in terms of mixing up the orientation of force. And you can listen to a little more about that if you go to the podcast with JB Marin on the Sweet Science of Fighting podcast. But resisted sprints or accelerations, they're very low risk of injury in terms of hamstring and calf which you typically see within team sports because you don't reach max velocity. So it's a nice way to reduce the risk of injury. And then the lateral movement, I really like too, especially resisted. Obviously, you're moving a lot laterally, not just forward and back uh, within the cage at MMA. So definitely something that you can employ if you're already doing something like that. If you're not, don't just add this in six weeks out from a fight. So it looks like we've got some more prehab style exercise. So band pull aparts. Less is more. Very true. If you're going to take one thing from this video, less is more. Do less and you'll get more from it than just pumping volume. All right. So looks like the band pull bus almost uh, part of the warm up before getting to the, this looks like the main lift and it's going to be a floor press with chains. And I like the exercise selection here. So typically, you know, why would you use a floor press over a, over a bench press, looks like it's actually a complex set too. And then push up. Okay, so I'm not sure where the push up fit into that, but let's just take these two first. So we have the floor press with chains. So why why use the floor press over the bench press? Well, you reduce the range of motion. So as you can see here, obviously when the arms hit the floor, that's as low as you get. So typically, if you have shoulder injuries or you're just looking to lessen the load on the shoulders floor press is a great option i like it i actually used a whole in-season cycle uh with a rugby team of just floor press instead of bench press for that reason works well then you have the addition of chains and we actually talked a lot about the uh accommodating resistance in the podcast with dustin oranchuk and then the podcast that is going to come out in a couple of weeks with uh, marek uh, and you can check those out we can check one of them out now, but you can check the other one out soon. And the idea, in terms of just of just pure strength and uh, muscle mass, doesn't really make any difference. But with talking athletic performance, there is potentially some value. Obviously, as the weight is lowered, the okay, as you as the barbell descends, the weight decreases, and then as you accelerate and press, the weight increases. And the idea is that you're able to maintain. Uh, acceleration and speed of the barbell versus if you didn't have the change you spend uh, over half of that concentric phase decelerating and if you look at any sporting movements you don't spend any time decelerating in an explosive sporting movement so you know it's closer to a I guess sporting movement profile then again you know jumping and throwing is also uh, that kind of force time curve so Regardless, it's a, good, it's, a, it's a nice addition to have if you have access to chains and things. Definitely worth using. Again, you can see you always want the chain links, a few chain links on the ground when you're at the top. You don't want the chains hanging. 
if the chains are hanging, then it just becomes unstable and it uh, defeats the purpose of the exercise. So I always have some chains on the floor. Then it looks like it's complexed with a medicine, supine medicine ball chest throw. And this would be uh, the shock method. So, oh my gosh, this is way too, way too uh, quick. So the shock method is a plyometric training method uh, made popular by Verkashansky, Soviet sports scientist. And it's it's essentially plyometrics, but the next level up. So not many people get to a point where they need to do something like this. I think with the upper body, you have a little more leniency than the lower body just because the loads are much lighter. So the difference between, a ply, between tip, uh, traditional or typical plyometric training and the shock method is gravity or essentially, I guess you could say height in a sense, leading to gravity. So uh, examples of exercises within the shock method, like this one, supine medicine ball, where someone drops the medicine ball. For the lower body, it'll be a drop jump or a death jump. So if you're standing on that box, you will be stepping off and then rebounding. That will be a lower body shock method exercise. And the idea is that you place even more stress on the system because you basically have your body weight, or in this case, a medicine ball coming down at speed and you're having to quickly put the brakes on eccentrically and then rebound that as fast as possible concentrically and because of that speed of eccentric and the extra you say speed that's coming down you're able to elicit more speed and more power on the way up so uh then you've got adaptations around that like increased uh stiffness i'm talking active stiffness not flexibility so the ability to be able to use that elastic energy uh improves drastically so it's a more intense method uh and i think it's probably better for most fighters to be doing upper body like this versus going to drop jumps and death jumps i mean even in my sweet science fighting underground programs i don't think i've programmed a drop jump or death jump just because it's not needed for most athletes i think you'd be quite advanced to use it whereas this you don't have to you still have to have some training background but you don't have to be as advanced because the load isn't, isn't as crazy as your body weight when you're dropping off a box then we've got push-ups i don't know where that fit in that cycle but let's just assume that's maybe out of order i don't know then we have a landmine, looks like almost like a landmine push press with a band as well. So uh, landmines, again, they're a great tool. There's nothing like inherently, I don't want to say special, I want to say, I don't think, it's not like better than anything else. It's just another tool you can use for a single arm pressing. What I really like about the landmine is if you have shoulder problems, which based on this training the exercise selection in this, Sean O'Malley might have some kind of shoulder issues. That's just um, just an observation from my experience if I'm from training athletes. Like these are the exercises I would use if someone was having shoulder problems. Um, and that's where I think the landmine potentially has benefit. Hey, if he's got shoulder problems, maybe maybe that's a, a reason to fade him <laughs> going into this fight if you're a sports better. Don't take that from me. That is a not a sports betting prediction but regardless the landmine's nice because it gives you that intermediate between overhead and uh flat well, i guess flat pressing or horizontal pressing and that because you can move your body around the bar the shoulders don't get uh the same stress as you would for example trying to press overhead etc so it's a really nice option the band again same thing as the chains that allows you to accelerate through the movement um interestingly enough the in a recent podcast that comes out next week with rebecca summers of the ufc pi they've actually retired the landmine punch so they don't use that exercise anymore or use it for testing. They now use the jammers on the power rack. So the jammers are essentially these handles that come down vertically on the rack. So when you're, I guess you could say, throwing punches on it or pushing on it as punches, it's more horizontal versus over your head. So that's just maybe something to observe. But yeah, landmines are a great tool. I really like them for that, especially using the legs as well. Some product placement. And then it looks like he's doing goblet squats with a kettlebell. So a little bit of uh, lower body movement. I'm assuming this is just shadow boxing for the camera. <laughs> uh, what else we got going? Yep. So it's a little full body session, just a parallel. And then we got some uh, dead bugs with anti, I guess a dead bug hold, or could be a hollow hold, but more of a dead bug hold because the legs are bent. And then holding the bands there creates an anti-extension stress on the trunk and core. So the idea here is you're having to maintain a, a flat lower back on the floor. And you're ma basically maintaining this pelvic position where it's kind of tucked under. 
And then by adding the band resistance, you're having to essentially crunch up and hold that position. It's just adding, and you have to try and stop uh, the bands pulling your arms back. And you can imagine this, this is actually a really good drill for, not just MMA, but even for grapplers, especially if you play off your back a lot. Obviously within jujitsu, you wanna have essentially that connection with your elbows and knees. You don't want uh, practice, or your opponents to get that inside position. This is definitely something you could uh, drill that would be, I guess you could say quote unquote specific to grappling uh, as a good option to use. And we've got anything else in this session? Just a manual theory. That's it. That's that's the session. So that's uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley session six weeks out. Hopefully, I gave you a little bit of insight into what's going on there. Um, there wasn't too much else. I mean, at the beginning, he was on the bike, but I, but I assume that's just more of like a little warm up there uh, to get things going. So uh, make sure you subscribe that helps the channel out a lot and if you have any other fight breakdowns or breakdowns of uh, training routines you want me to look at post them in the comments because this one was actually recommended from a comment found this one and broke it down so make sure you comment below and i'll find more for you